Hi, I'm Jameson Mitchell and I'd like to welcome you to the Oracle Outlook for the week starting March the 21st, 2016. So stay tuned. And here we are with the cards on the table. And the deck assisting me for this week's Oracle Outlook is the Dondorf Lenormand. And so I'm going to take the Lenormand in hand. And usually when I do my weekly general readings, the question is of a general nature. And it's basically, what do we need to know about the week ahead? So I'm shuffling the cards with that question in mind. Now I'm going to cut the deck. And I'm going to take the top five cards from the deck. And that's going to represent our line of five for the week. Just taking a moment to make sure that they're all in the view. Okay. So the first card that we're going to look at is the card that's in the middle. This is what's known as a hinge card because it connects the two on the left and the two on the right. I always look to the middle card as what the central issue or the focus for the week will be. And this card is the heart. So the heart for me can represent a couple of things. It can represent passion and enthusiasm. It could also represent that we are being asked to look at our relationships this week. This is a card that can deal with love and romance, but basically any feelings and affections that we have for other people. So again, we're being asked to look at whatever it is that we're passionate about, what it is that we're enthusiastic about. Uh, for some of us watching this video, it may be asking us to look at our love or romantic relationships, but basically anything that we have feeling and affection for. So now we're going to look at the other cards around it because Lenormand is best read in combination with the other cards around it. So, but this is the focus. So now let's take a moment to look at all the other cards around it. Okay, here we have the clouds. We have the bouquet. And on the other side, we have the tree and rounding out the line, we have the crossroads, the ways or the path. So looking at the cards, the way I approach it, I always look to the cards that are flanking it, being the central card, flanking it for possible meanings. So I would read these cards together and then I would look at the cards that are on opposite ends. So here we have the bouquet and the tree. So the bouquet is a card that represents things like appreciation. It represents gifts, surprise, invitations, um, beauty, or anything that we consider to be beautiful. So that is an aspect of the bouquet. With the tree on the other side, the tree can represent growth and development. It can represent health and healing. It can also represent something that uh, we need to be patient with because trees take a long time to grow and develop, so it could be a card of patience. It can also be a card when we're looking at um, family. I always look at the tree as extended family and playing on the idea of genealogy and ancestry with the family tree. Um, it could also be about life, you know, going with the idea of the tree of life. So those are some of the keywords that I have for tree. So if we look at the pair of bouquet and tree, it could be um, a growing sense of appreciation, you know, that or appreciation that takes time to grow. So if we're keeping with the idea that the card in the middle of the heart represents, you know, feelings, affection, something that we're passionate about, something that we're enthusiastic about, it could be a sense of you know, a growing sense of appreciation, especially if it's a relationship. If it's something that we're passionate about, like a passion, then it could be that the bouquet is about a talent that is going to take time to grow and develop. It could also be a gift if we're passionate about something, it could be a gift of healing. 
So there could be somebody who is watching this video who is a, a health practitioner or a healing practitioner. I always tend to look at this as more like um, a metaphysical type of healing modality. So it could be like a person is, you know, developing a gift for that modality and they're in that space where it may be something relatively new, like they're just getting rooted in it. I always tend to look at the tree as something that we're getting rooted in. So um, it could be that the gift is rooted in healing and being very passionate about its growth and development, but it's going to take time for that to um, mature for it to grow and develop. So there are some aspects of the bouquet and the tree as a combination. Now we're looking to the clouds and the ways. Now the clouds is a challenging card and some consider it to be the most challenging card in the deck. The clouds can represent confusion, uncertainty, and doubt. That's how I tend to read it. It could also be like um, being in a mental fog or haze, you know, so like, you know, that, that sense where like I'm not clear on it. So sometimes people say, you know, I'm in a fog or I'm, I'm hazy about this kind of experience. So I tend to look at that with the clouds. So that's the one side. And on the other side, we have the ways. So the ways can represent a couple of things. It can represent choices options and alternatives and so I tend to look at this as multiples having like more than one option because of all the different directions that the ways um, move into so it could be about direction it could be about departure but I tend to look at it as you know being faced with the choice or an option or alternative and there's more than one and it's a matter of choosing the best and right option for you in the moment in time so going with that it could be, you know, um, a sense of confusion about direction, you know, um, confusion or uncertainty about what our choices and options are. So, and it could be, again, in relation to the passion. So if it's something that we're passionate about that may have started off being a sense of confusion and uncertainty about it, you know, and on the other side of it, it could be like reaching a sense of like direction um, uh, you know, knowing a particular approach, you know, um, you know, starting out with a sense of uncertainty, now moving to a place where options and choices are being presented to us. It could also be about a relationship. It could be uncertainty about whether to stay or to go, you know, being faced with the options, you know, you could choose to stay or you could choose to leave. So it could be like somebody watching this video and if they're in a relationship, you know, it could be that they're uncertain about the direction about uncertain about where it's going or you know uncertain about whether to stay or whether to go so I'm seeing that as some options with that now the next thing we can do is we could look at the two cards that are coming before the heart which would be clouds and bouquet so again clouds is usually uncertainty doubt um, something that's uh, confusing and then the bouquet is, you know, gifts, invitations, surprises. So it could be like surprise confusion, you know, uh, you know, confusion that came on suddenly, it came on without any warning. And so you're in this space where you're confused and you find that to be surprising. It could be also, you know, confusion or uncertainty about one's appreciation, like you're in a relationship, let's say, and you're unsure whether your partner appreciates you or not. And the interesting thing here is I'm touching on another aspect of it. These two cards are what we call face cards because there is the king of clubs here for the clouds and the queen of um, queen of spades for the bouquet. So there's two people involved in here. So it could be a man and a woman. And if you look, she's looking at him and he's looking away from her in the opposite direction. So it could be like a woman here in particular is uncertain about uh, whether or not a man appreciates her or not in the course of a relationship. So there could be that kind of energy going on too. It could also be if we look at the heart as something that we're passionate about, it could be, you know, um, or, you know, we're in a place where we're exploring what our passion is. You know, it could start off where, you know, where we're confused about that and we're confused from a standpoint like we don't 
have a sense of what our our gifts or our talents are. So it could be like, you know, you wanting to be passionate about something, but not having a sense of what it is that you have in terms of a talent or a skill that could be um, cultivated. You know, it could also be, too, if we look at our feelings, you know, just going with the heart, not having anything to do with a relationship per se or passion directly. It could be like there's a confusion or uncertainty about the beauty of life, you know, where, you know, where if we look at the clouds and the heart as a combination, it could be like, you know, uh, confused about our feelings, you know, not sure about our feelings. It could be a sense of like being uh, emotionally numb, you know, you're, you're more in your head than in your heart. And so because of that, you may be overanalyzing things or you're not seeing the beauty of life because you're too much in your head and not in your heart. So I'm seeing that as possible combinations on this side. On this side, we have tree and we have the ways. And so one of the things in terms of passion that I immediately, immediately see with this pair is I talked about the tree being about health and healing, then the ways could be about alternatives. So I always see this pair as, you know, a person who is an alternative health practitioner. So again, that could be somebody who does things like um, acupuncture, um, could be somebody who does energy work like Reiki. I'm a Reiki practitioner, so that just naturally comes to mind. But there are lots of healing modalities. There's, um, there's healing touch, there's quantum touch, there's all different types of healing modalities. So it could be, and going with that, that would even make this make more sense because there are so many options in terms of the healing. So a person could have a passion and a talent and a passion for healing and then being faced with uh, what direction to move that in, you know, and not being sure at the, at the beginning, like, you know, I'm not quite sure I have this talent or this skill for, and this passion for healing, but I don't know what direction I want it to go in. And especially if, with the alternative health um, industry, not, you know, having so many options and not being sure which is the right approach or which is the right course or which is the right path to go down. So I'm seeing that that's my immediate thing. It could be too in terms of the growth of a relationship or a growth of a romance, you know, something that's going to take time to develop. It could be again, you know, if the person is wanting to make the choice of letting that grow and develop with the treat. But my immediate thing is like, there may be somebody watching this video who has um, an interest or a passion and is really enthusiastic about working in the alternative health field and wanting to choose the right modality for him or her. So I'm looking at that. So what we could do then is look at the line to get some meaning from that. So it could be confusion about a talent and a passion for health and healing that leads to a new direction or new options or you know seeking alternatives so that's how I'm going to look at the line uncertainty in the beginning you know about a talent uh, you know and a passion for healing that opens the door for a new direction or a new path being presented so that's how I would read the line so now what we're going to do here in the next portion is to take a look at all the playing cards because I tend to come from a background where I started reading cards, I started with playing cards. So I always look to this to give us more information about the central theme here. And now taking a look at the playing cards, I touched on two of them in the previous segment, which was the King of Clubs with the clouds. We have the Queen of Spades for the bouquet. We have the Jack of Hearts for the heart. We have the Seven of Hearts for the tree and the queen of diamonds for the ways or the crossroads. So the immediate thing that jumps out at me is two things. I see that we have two cards from the suit of hearts. So hearts in cardomancy can represent a couple of things. The most obvious would be could represent love and romance and relationships. So that may be again going with the heart that may be a central issue or focus for some of us this week. It could also be about domestic matters. So again, I'm seeing that. So it could be like, you know, somebody's home life or the relationships are close to home, you know, something in their immediate circle. 
So it could be some energy towards that. Um, the other thing that jumps out at me is that we have a number of face cards. We have one, two, three, four face cards. So it could be, again, that going with the idea about the relationship or the um, feelings and affections of other people, it could be compounded because we have three, uh, four face cards out of five for the face card. So it could be involving other people this week. So the uh, first thing we can do is we can look at what I do with uh, the playing cards is a technique called the hidden dynamics. So I would look to the first two cards and add those up. And so in Cardamancy for me, kings are 13. So take 13 for the king and 12 for the queen. So we have a total of 25. And then what I do is I look for the corresponding card to that number. So in the Lenormand, the 25th card in the deck is the ring. And here's the card. So the ring is a card that represents um, commitment. It represents uh, a promise, a pledge, you know, something that we are engaging in. So it could be, again, the relationship aspect of it. So if it, if it is a relationship aspect, let's say, the ring would be a card that represents, you know, a serious commitment, you know, committing to it. So it could be some of us watching this video, if we're looking at this from a relationship aspect, then it could be like honoring a commitment or making a deeper or more serious commitment. If it is that some of us watching this video are looking at the heart from a sense of being passionate about something, again, it would carry the same kind of weight with the ring. It's just asking you to commit to that. You know, it could be like you are becoming more serious about it, but it just involves you making a serious commitment to it. So the ring, that's the ring on the one side. So now we can take the seven of hearts and the 12 for the queen, and that's 19. So the 19th card is the tower. So here's the tower. So now the tower is a, a card that can represent a couple of things. If we are looking at this from an emotional or relationship aspect, the tower is a card that represents isolation. And you know, because it represents like being in an, like an ivory tower, so to speak, you're in a tower, you're in this place all by yourself. So here we have an interesting um, dichotomy. On the one side here, we have the ring, which is a sign of commitment, you know, making a serious commitment, and then the tower on this side is represents an isolation. So remember, I did say one of the things, or one of the things that was possible in this reading was like being faced with the commitment, the idea or the choice, I should say, of whether we were going to stay in a relationship or leave it. So here we have being committed, being engaged, and here we have being withdrawn, being isolated, being separated. So it could be somebody is really facing that kind of decision. It could also be that if we look at it more of making a serious commitment, then sometimes a tower is a card that represents institutions, um, rules, regulations, policies, things of that nature, then it could be literally the institution of marriage. You know, so, you know, that would be like somebody getting engaged, somebody working on the process of becoming married, somebody, you know, um, making a commitment illegal. <laughs> That's the thing. You know, the thought that popped through my mind in the minute was like somebody saying like, uh, you know, the idea of like when we say we're going to make an honest woman or man out of somebody else. <laughs> so that came to my mind. So it's about like looking at the institution of marriage. Now, conversely, it could be like somebody was married or, you know, entertaining the idea. And then, you know, sometimes the tower can represent like, you know, uh, the idea of getting a divorce or, you know, you know, uh, a legal separation or something of that nature. So it could be like we were once married or once committed or once engaged. And now we're on this, we're on the other side of that. And now we're looking at, you know, a split or a separation. So there could be that energy to that. So it could be like somebody's facing that challenge. It's like, like do I stay? Do I go? You know, or, you know, we're going to make this, you know, this, where are we going? Where's this relationship going on? Are we going to make it more serious? And are we going to make it legal? The other thing here, if we go with the idea of this being passionate, you know, or being a passion, then that idea of like the alternative health practitioner that I was seeing could be like somebody is working on wanting to make that his or her business because I sometimes look at the tower as self-employment or, you know, working with an institution. So it could be working with a healing institution, let's say, 
Um, or it could be like somebody's doing freelance work. So those are some possibilities with the tower. So those are the hidden dynamics. So now the other thing we can do is if we take these cards aside and we take them and we add the cards all the way across, all the um, playing cards, we have 13 and 12. We have 11 with the jack. We have 7 and then we have 12. So now we have a total of 55 and there are 36 cards in the Lenormand deck. So 55 is over 36. So I'm going to take the 5 and the 5, add them together, and that's 10. So then the 10th card in the deck is the Scythe. And here's the Scythe. So the Scythe is a card that can represent a couple of things. The first thing is that it can represent something sudden, something unexpected. So it could be like somebody is doing something or faced with something that needs immediate attention and needs an uh, immediate response because I see this card as doing something quickly or something that needs to be done um, uh, swiftly or something that needs to be you know done um, fast something you know so fast quick and swift are some words that I would ascribe to the site so it could be like you know needing something to happen quickly something that needs your immediate attention. Now in terms of a relationship, sometimes this card can represent a split because the scythe cuts things in half. So it could be a split, um, severing something, something being cut, you know, something being divided, a sense of division. So it could also be a break or a disconnection. So again, you know, there's that idea of somebody watching this video may be in a state of, you know, needing to uh, really take a look at whether they want to remain in a current relationship or not and if so um, what are they going to do about it in terms of you know the split or the disconnection it may become in the result may be as you know they're feeling a sense of disconnection and wanting to move on um, because they're not feeling appreciated again with the clouds and I'm not feeling appreciated so I want to leave this relationship and maybe move on to something that would be better for me or that I'm going to need to take time to heal so I need to step away so I can heal. You know, there could be that kind of energy attached to that. Again, it could also be if somebody has a passion for healing, then this card here would be like, you know, getting um, sharp with that. You know, like sharpening your skill, so to speak. So if there's a talent here, it could be like sharpening the talent. It could be, you know, becoming more accurate or more precise in that that kind of energy because the scythe is a card where we have the scythe itself as a, a a tool that cuts things but we also have the wheat here which is a time of gathering a time of harvest so it could be a time of harvesting you know that sense of talent that sense of ability um, and making the arrangements for that growth to take place this could be like the thing that has to happen in between it's like it's not just enough to have the passion it's about what are you doing to cultivate or harvest that skill or talent or ability so I'm seeing that so again depending on how you're looking at it, if you're looking at it, the relationship issue it could be you know something that we may need to address in terms of a separation or a split it could be in terms of making the commitment stronger it could be you know I talked about the institution of marriage so I'm seeing all of this and I'm seeing in my head like the idea of you know a quickie wedding or you know uh, a, a quick engagement you know or that kind of thing or like you know setting the date and you want to have the ceremony as quick as possible and some people around remember as I said all the other face cards and people around you may be saying isn't that quick isn't that sudden are you rushing into things so you know that kind of thing um, so, but from the passion standpoint, it could be like, you know, just taking the time to cultivate the passion, but with a sense of like wanting to be more accurate or more precise in that. So those are some of the meanings for the playing cards, at least for me, in this week's reading. So now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to take the numbers and to see what the essence is. And so when I do a Lenormand card reading, I look at the three aspects of the card for me. So in the first segment, we looked at the image and what the keywords are associated with the image. And then in the second segment, I looked at all the playing cards for the hidden dynamics and the essence card from that standpoint. And now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to look at what I call the final advice um, kind of meaning for the reading and that's by looking at the numbers so clouds is six 
and 9 for the bouquet, 24 for the heart, 5 for the tree, and 22 for the ways. And that gives us a total of 66. Again, it's a number over 36, so I'm going to take the two digits, add them together, and that gives us 12. And the 12th card in the deck is the birds. So the birds is a uh, card for me that represents communication and conversation. So it could be part of the challenge or part of the issue this week is there may be a need to have an important conversation. So I'm also looking at the card and it's reinforcing the idea of a partnership, the relationship aspect of it. So. Um, because there's two birds on the card, so that for me represents a partnership. So it could be an important conversation or that needs to take place in an existing partnership or relationship. And it could also be too that we are in a space in an existing relationship in which we're experiencing a sense of frustration or anxiety because I see that as the emotional side of the bird. So it could be like we're in a relationship uh, in which we are having a sense of frustration about it. Um, it's, it's increasing our sense of anxiety. We may want to have a conversation about that, but we're also feeling again that sense of anxiety or being nervous about what it is that needs to be said. So I'm seeing that aspect of it. It could also be too, if we're going with the idea of the heart being something that we're passionate about, this card would be again, you know, talking about like what it is that we are saying about the passions. Are we having a conversation about it? Do we need to talk to people about it? Is there a relationship that needs to be formed that around that passion that would help us grow and develop it? You know, I'm also a big believer in being mindful of the words that we use. So with that, birds could be just saying, you know, be mindful of like who you talk to about it. You know, you want to talk to what it is that you're passionate about with people who will somehow get it. Sometimes the birds can represent like idle chatter, it could be like gossip and rumor, you know, speculation, you know. So those kinds of conversations usually are not in our best and highest good. So if you're really passionate about something, it could be like you just have to be mindful of who you're going to share that passion with. You want to share with people who are going to resonate with it or, you know, support you in that, that kind of energy rather than somebody who's only going to kind of um, bring you down because they don't get what it is that you're trying to accomplish. So again, I'm seeing the birds as, you know, partnership energy again, you know, maybe needing to have a conversation or that there are communication issues in the relationship that need to be addressed. Um, if we're talking about a passion, something that we're enthusiastic about, it could be like, who do we need to talk to about it? You know, what kind of conversations are we having about it? It could be like one of the things that you could do to grow and develop it would be to give a talk about it, you know? So, cause I sometimes see the birds as public speaking and that could be done in all sorts of ways. The birds could suggest that you could talk about it in a podcast, you know, you could do an interview, you could be on a radio show, anything that is spoken and, and needs to be heard audibly, you know, because I, I see this as, you know, vocal speaking, you know, things that we have to use our, our vocal cords for, and also things that we have to hear. So it's like, you know, maybe you attend a lecture you know, now that I'm seeing this, you tend to lecture or somebody gives a workshop in which a, they present a presentation, but it's um, spoken, you know, or you get with other people um, and, you know, going with the face cards again, you know, you're, you're in a small group of people, a small group of people um, sharing ideas about that. You could work with a coach. Sometimes I see this as a coach or a counselor, you know, working with somebody one on one to help you grow and develop. Now that could go with the relationship aspect too. If you're at the point where you are frustrated with an existing relationship and there is a clearly a communication issue, it might be that you need to seek out counseling and getting another person in there to help you work on repairing your communication um, skills in that relationship. So 
Uh, again, this has been your Oracle outlook for the week. So summing up, we had the clouds, which is a sense of confusion, uncertainty, moving into the bouquet, which is a sense of appreciation. So there's uncertainty about, you know, appreciation or not being able to see the beauty clearly um, pertaining to either a relationship or, you know, something that we are passionate and enthusiastic about. On the flip side or the other side of that, we have the tree, which is something that's growing and developing. So it could be you know, healing a relationship or, you know, a growing sense of passion or, you know, a passion for healing. And then it ultimately leads to, you know, taking some course of action. So you're seeing choices, you're seeing opportunities, you're seeing alternatives come your way. You're seeing uh, a direction, you know, you're, you're approaching it. So it could be like, you know, being faced with the option, like, do I commit? Do I, do I depart? Um, what direction do I want to take this modality in? You know, but at the end of it, you're you're seeing a course of action. You're seeing a direction you can move into. You you see the choices and the options, and you're now choosing the best one for you. So again, this has been the Oracle Outlook for the week. I am James Tim Mitchell. I'm signing off, and I'm so glad that you're here sharing this space here with me. I hope this reading was helpful. I hope you found it enlightening. I hope you found it insightful. And until our next video together, take care.